Welcome to our review on meiosis. So what we actually find then is a lot of organisms such as humans use sexual reproduction. Now for sexual reproduction to take place what we need to have happened previously is the process of meiosis. Now do look at the spelling of it and make sure you learn the spelling because they are quite strict about this on your exam. And the key thing about sexual reproduction is that it leads to genetic variation in an organism and a species. Another term we need to be aware of is this phrase gamete. Now a gamete quite simply is a sex cell. So if we're thinking humans, we're talking about the sperm cell and the egg cell. Now just a little recap on those sperm and egg cells because it's been a few years since you studied them properly. First of all, egg cells are made in the ovaries and sperm cells are made in the testes. Now, both of those are gametes and they're made by this process called meiosis. Now, the key thing about these gamma, gametes then is that they're what's called haploid. Now, a haploid cell has only half the number of chromosomes of a normal body cell. So in the case of humans, a haploid cell has 23 chromosomes, whereas our diploid cell has the 46. Now do go careful with this because one of the questions they do like to ask you is asking you about how many chromosomes there would be in a gamete or a sperm cell, for example, and they will tell you the number of chromosomes there are on a normal body cell. Sometimes it's the reverse. And the key thing to remember is read the information they give you. It's not always gonna be about humans. Therefore, if you just write down 23 for haploid and 46 for diploid, you're gonna get it wrong. Just have a look at the question if they're giving you the value of the normal body cell number of chromosomes and they're asking you for the haploid number, then just halve it. If it's the other way around, then you double it. Okay, so just read the information they give you in the question. So the process of fertilization then, quite simply is when the sperm and the egg cell have joined together and their nuclei have fused. Once that takes place, what we've made is something called a zygote. So what we find in that zygote then is half of the chromosomes came from the mother and half of them came from the father. Another favorite question that they have on the exam paper is all to do with the sperm cells and their adaptations. Now, quite often they will ask you to explain how certain adaptations are good for the sperm cells function. Now that word explain is important because it means you've got to give the adaptation and then say how it helps, okay? So the adaptations you really need to remember then, first one is it's small and has a tail. And then the reason for that is that it allows it to swim to the egg. They've also got a nucleus and the reason for that one is to carry genetic material. They've got many mitochondria which are in that little section just behind the head. So the head is that big bulbous bit that looks kind of like the head of a tadpole. And then there's a little slightly thinner bit just behind there before you get into the tail. So it's in that section behind the head before the tail that we find those mitochondria and they're there to provide energy. Finally, in the very tip of the head, they've got this structure called an acrosome. Now that's whole purpose is to release enzymes as the sperm comes into contact with the membrane of the egg and those enzymes digest the membrane and allow the sperm to gain entry. So what is this process of meiosis then? What we find is the first section is really easy because it's just the same as mitosis. So if you've learnt mitosis really well, then you've already got the first chunk of meiosis down too. So we'll run through it nice and simply for you. First thing that's got to happen before anything is the DNA has to be copied. So that means that every chromosome is copied. Once we've got that, then the chromosomes line up on the equator and then one of each chromosome pair moves to the opposite ends of the cell before the cell divides. So that gives us two identical cells, remember. Now the difference here from mitosis is that we have a second division. Now don't write down that the DNA replicates again at this point because it doesn't. What happens next is the chromosomes line up on the equator once more and then they're pulled apart and moved to opposite ends of the cell. The cell will then divide at that point and what we end up with are four haploid cells. So just to run through that again with you, 
First thing is DNA replication, and we've already run through how that takes place. Then the chromosomes line up along the equator. One of each pair goes to the opposite ends of the cell, and the cell divides to give us two identical copies. Then the chromosomes line up along the equator again, and then they're pulled so that half of each go to the opposite ends of the cell, and then the cell divides again, leaving us with four haploid cells.